Hello there everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well today, beautiful. I thought I would make a video today to celebrate the console release of the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters and I actually want to make a bunch of videos about FF1 to 6 because honestly, as times progressed, I've realized that they're some of my favorite games in the series, if not my favorites, I'm looking at you, Final Fantasy V. But I recently just finished Final Fantasy 1 again and I <laughs> attempted to do a 24 hour stream where I would play each of them one after the other and I'd been studying a load of speed runs for the games so that I could then use those strategies and maybe use them in a more casual playthrough as I'm not a speedrunner myself but I thought hold on a second some of the stuff and strategies that speedrunners use to get through the games quickly are stuff you would never think to do in a casual playthrough so join me today as I take you through a few of the tips I've learned from the best speedrunners out there for Final Fantasy 1 and I'll share some of the tips and tricks that maybe you didn't think of using while playing through the game to help your own playthroughs so the first trick that I'm going to talk about here has to do with your warrior so if your warrior's not tanking as much as they probably should, then there is a way to make them as hard as a rock so that they never take damage again. And I mean this literally, because you turn them into a rock. So petrification in this game basically makes it so that the target can't act, and like any Final Fantasy, if your whole party gets petrified, it's game over. However, because of the way in which uh, your party members are targeted by enemies, they have a 50% chance to target the top slot character in your party. And if they're petrified, they'll continue to target that character and miss and can't deal damage, can't do anything to that character. So speedrunners will typically take the first opportunity to get petrified, which is as early as the Earth Cave when you find cockatrices, and allow your top party member, usually a warrior, to get petrified so that for the rest of the game, you don't have to worry about gearing them up, you don't have to worry about leveling them. However, because they're petrified and not KO'd, they still gain experience. So if you ever want to take them out of being petrified, you can. Next on the list, I want to point out that you can absolutely tackle the four fiends out of order. Like, you don't have to go through it one after the other. So it's supposed to go Lich, Marilith, Kraken, and then Tiamat. But for speedrunning, it's actually encouraged for you to go to the Sunken Shrine and the Mirage Tower for Kraken and Tiamat before you go for Marilith in Mount Golg. And one of the cute things that I noticed while playing the game is that if you get to Tiamat before you've taken out Marilith, he actually comments on the fact that you've only taken out two other fiends. This may be something that's exclusive to the Pixel Remaster, but I thought that was a really nice touch. The next thing I discovered while learning kind of the speedrunning strategies for Final Fantasy 1 is that the big old quest that you go on to go to Bahama, obtain the rat tail from the Citadel of Trial so that you can get the upgrades to your character's jobs, it's actually pretty pointless. You don't really need it, like, at all. It doesn't really do anything, except for the fact that you're able to get access to certain spells, none of which you really need to finish the game. It's If you wanted to 100% the game or get the Platinum Trophy, as I've done recently, then yes, you're absolutely going to want to go for Bahama and the Rat Tail, but you don't actually need it at all. And besides, I think the original sprites are much nicer to look at than the ones that you get that are upgrades. Speaking of unnecessary upgrades, which is a lot of what gets cut out when you do with the speedruns, like not having to gear your characters. There are like no weapons in the game that aren't swords. So if your main character is a warrior, then you don't really need the swords, which means you don't really need any weapons at all. The vast majority of magic is pretty unnecessary as well. And having cleared through the game again with fast clearing in mind, I'm going to point this out here. I'm not a speedrunner, but I love the tactics that speedrunners employ in order to get through the game quickly. And as I say, I wanted to transfer that and see if it would apply to a more casual playthrough, which kind of just led you to discover new things. And now I only used, for my Black Mage, I only used Temper, Haste, Thunder, Thundara, Faraga, and Blizzarga. That's it. And then with White Mage, I literally only learned Cure, Healara, Healaga. That's it. Don't need any other spells. There's a lot of spells in the game. Don't need any of them. And I only really took the White Mage for those delicious AoE, AoE heals through Healara and Healaga. In fact, most speedrunners who are going for a low time aren't using White Magic at all because, let's face it, items can do the majority of what White Magic can do. And instead, if you go for two Black Mages, you're just clearing things much quicker. Now, obviously, to use a White Mage or a Red Mage is safer, 
but you don't have to have them. Before we continue, don't forget to check out all of my social media links down in the description box below, including Twitter, Twitch, Discord, and Patreon. I do always shout out one of my patrons every time I release a new video, and today that person is going to be DJ Laws, who has been a supporter of mine for a really long time now, and I'm ever so grateful to you and to each and every one of the people that supports this channel without you guys, and all of you that would watch this channel generally, I wouldn't be where I am today, so I'm very, very grateful. One of the most important items that I've discovered in the game is from the Sunken Shrine, which is the Giant's Gloves. Now, the Giant's Gloves are an item that you can use in order to cast Saber, which is a late game Black Mage spell, which kind of combines the effect of Temper and Haste onto the character that's using it. So if you're using a Monk, which is going to be your primary damage dealer, again, doesn't need weapons because it does more damage, they do more damage when they're just bare fisted. And you can use this multiple times in combination with temper and haste because these effects are all multiplicative to do more and more and more damage as you get through the game so from the sunken shrine onwards giant's gloves are going to be an absolute mega mega win for you especially against chaos because in the pixel remaster chaos is actually kind of a nightmare and his rng dependency can be a real pain so any ideas that you get to kind of tackle that quicker great Following on from that as well, you don't necessarily have to use the spells either because going back into the desert caravan after you've bought the bottled fairy to get Oxy Ale, which gets you into the sunken shrine, if you leave the desert caravan and then go back in again, the shop is still there and has different items. So here you can pick up strength tonics, giants tonics and speed tonics. And all of these will increase a character's stats, whether it be their max HP, again, very helpful for chaos, their strength or their speed. And you can again stack these on top of the other buffs you get so that your monk is doing crazy amounts of damage. You'll find that in the early game, the black mages will do the majority of your damage. But as you start to get some of these items, your monk is absolutely going to overtake them. So hopefully some of those tips are things you may not have known about with Final Fantasy 1. Let me know in the comments below if these are the kinds of things you want to see more of when it comes to Final Fantasy, especially the Pixel Remasters. And I will hopefully be bringing you some very exciting stuff about Final Fantasy 16 very, very soon as well. So thank you very much for watching. And don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell for notifications of the future videos I might be making. All the Final Fantasy goodness you can find here. Or if you want to come and find me on Twitch and talk to me about Pixel Remasters, or of FF16 or all of the FF goodness that's out there then please go ahead and do so it'd be lovely to hear from you but for now I shall love you and leave you with that thank you ever so much for joining me today beautiful and I wish you a really lovely day have a good one bye now